project tonight is changing the transmission fluid on a 2004 Oldsmobile Alero. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a bunch of these bolts out and I'm just going to break them loose first because inside of this pan there is all kinds of transmission fluid. We're just going to go ahead and we're going to take and we're going to loosen them up so that way we can actually drop it out without making a big giant mess. All right so what I have done here is I have loosened these six bolts and what it's doing is it's trying to keep the pan going down a little bit and then it's just going into my drain pan expect to make somewhat of a mess with this because the pan's not super big but when you start loosening everything up it has a tendency to run down the pan but we're just going to let it drain for a little while now i'm going to loosen these up a little bit more we're done draining for a half hour drain down but there's still quite a bit in that pan guaranteed get as much of that fluid into your catch basin as possible once you have all the bolts out you got to know that this thing still has fluid in it you want to take it down and tip it over now it's very important that you look at your pan you can kind of look at the clutch material that's inside of here this is a magnet and as you can see, it's designed to pick up any of the excess that is part of the clutch material because it is metallic based. We're going to go ahead and we're going to wipe this all out, spray it down, and then clean it up. A little bit of clutch material, nothing terrible. Now these gaskets here, they are reusable. I think that transmission fluid has been changed in this once before. I've got a new gasket, so I'm going to be changing that over. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna clean this up. Next shot should be nice and cleaned up. And at this point, you can go ahead and you can reinstall your magnet. You can kind of see where it was right here. So we're just gonna put it right back. Make sure everything is clean. Now we're just gonna set that aside and we're gonna go get our filter changed. So that is the GM part number for the filter. And here is your new filter. It does come with a new bushing. I'll show you how to change that here in a second. Doesn't necessarily have to get changed, but it is a good recommendation because it just kind of rides inside of there. I'll show you that here in a second. So here, as you can see, this is our old filter right here. This just pulls out. And make sure you're doing this on cardboard or a big towel because expect it to look like Murder, She Wrote. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pull this little coupler out here. And what we want to do is we kind of want to crush it just so it can kind of pop out. You can use a screwdriver, and we're just going to kind of crush this seal because I have a new one, and I want to put the new one in. So we just want to be careful of the aluminum there. There we go. And she pops right out. Make sure it's cleaned out. Take your new seal right here. You're going to put it inside of here. I'm just going to put a little bit of oil on it to kind of help it get into there. And then don't use a hammer. I'm going to use my dead blow. Nice and easy. We want this to be flush with this. Just like that. All right, let's throw our filter in. Here we have our filter right here. This end right here just pushes right in. That's all there is to it. Now what we'll do is we'll put our pan back on. I'll just time lapse that. Before I time lapse it, just want to say this is our new gasket right here. This does have anti-crushed little holes in it here. I'll kind of zoom in. You can see the little metal grommet on each one of those. So I've got my torque wrench set for 124 inch pounds. I don't like to get them all torqued at once. We're gonna kinda go corner to corner 
to corner, to corner, to corner, to corner, to corner, and then I will go around and I will torque them. All right, so we are torqued, 124 inch pounds. So now comes the interesting part. Since there is no dipstick on this transmission, what we have to do is basically put in what we took out. On the passenger side of the transmission, you have this bolt right here, which is a 7 16th. You're gonna pull that out once we wanna check the level. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna break that loose right now, and then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put in four quarts of transmission fluid. The manufacturer states that it's 6.8 quarts just to do the pan drop. That is what we're going to do. That's one of the reasons that I have this on four jack stands. If you're doing this on a set of ramps, you've got to take that into account. And the best advice that I can give you is to take out exactly what you put in and you should be good because there is no way of checking the level. So I'll show you how that's done here in a second. So right down there, that, that little cap, that is the top of the transmission. It's a little bit difficult to get to. What I have found works the best is remove your air cleaner intake out of the way. Now you can clearly see the cap, and this just turns off. Once that air to air is out of the way, you can go ahead and just loosen this up. Make sure your cap is clean. Just going to spray it off with some brake cleaner. Next thing that you want to do is you are going to need this kind of funnel, a very long funnel that's going to go in there. I got this at Harbor Freight. It cost me $6.99. If you're doing this on ramps, you want to make sure you put at least four quarts in it before you move. Worst comes to worst, three quarts. Make sure you can get it off the ramp and that's when you can check it. That's why I have the jack stands up underneath there and I'm lifted up level so I can actually show you how this is done. When you're pouring the oil in here, take your time. There is a baffle on top of the transmission and if you pour it in there too fast, it's gonna come pouring out. That actually went in there a lot quicker than I thought it was going to. All right, at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the car up and let it warm up a little bit, get it up to operating temperature. Then I'm gonna to top it off. I'm going to undo that bolt down on the bottom, the one that I just showed you. And then I'm gonna fill once it warms up until that weeps out. I'll drop the camera down there and then I'll just comment on how many quarts that it took. All right, so that was 6.8 quarts. Well, I was actually seven quarts and obviously it was a little bit too much. Let me tighten that bolt back up. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna check for leaks. Look around your pan gasket, including that bolt that once you tighten it back up, everything looks good and dry. Now the next thing that I like to do is run it through all the gears while it's on the jack stands. If you're doing this on jack stands, make sure they're good jack stands. If you're doing this on a ramp and you're on the ground, pretty simple, just put it in reverse, let it have a little bit of power, put it in forward, let it have a little bit of power. Here we go. Put it in reverse first. Put it in the first gear. Let it go to second gear. Let it go to third gear. If you've got those, you'll have overdrive. Make sure you hit your brakes before you put it in the park so you're not banging against the parking pin. Once it's off, go ahead and check that bolt again, the actual oil check bolt, because as it's running, it won't leak. Once you have it off, if it's not tight all the way, it will leak. If you were to pull that out right now, it's just going to puke transmission fluid all over the place. And we look good.
At this point, you can go ahead and put your cap back on. And you can go ahead and put your air to air back on, your air filter hose. At this point, you can take it off the jack stands. And that's all there is to changing the transmission fluid. This particular one is a 2004 Oldsmobile Alero. It's for a Pontiac, Chevy Cavalier, anything with the 4T40 transmission. Pretty simple, pretty easy. It cost me about a hundred dollars to do everything that was a factory general motors gasket transmission filter i think they're about 350 to 400 to do it in a shop it took me about an hour not a big deal hopefully this video helped you out if you do use the video and you like it give me a thumbs up maybe subscribe helps me do some fun things on the channel Thanks a bunch. Have a good night. Be good.